Well, I understand he was on trial with you. He was work, seemed to be working out by himself on the spot, the time we were there. How ready is he? He's going to take more time? No, he's, he's almost there. I mean, he played 30 minutes against Delhi FC, a really good 30, 30 minutes once he got into his rhythm. Um, and that was his trial with us. We had him for, I think, about 10, 12 days through Santa Barbara. Um, and he's just a class act. I keep saying this is about bringing the right people into the club. That they've got to have a a real solid personality and 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 the right type of team mentality. And I think he's got that. But what he showed on the pitch is just that next level touch. His passing ability. So in terms of his readiness, it's you know the turf this weekend's a challenge for for him. He's he's obviously on a coming off that ACL and he's he's. You know, on his on his second potential game, so for us, not really worth the risk. He might travel with the team, he might be on the bench, but it's um, I'm looking more next week for the home opener and beyond. You know, putting him in the right conditions to minimise any risk to him. And I don't think we saw DeAndre and Richie out there today. Was yeah, DeAndre is still recovering, so you know he uh, he picked up that uh, injury in the match against Real Salt Lake. Uh, it was a calf issue and, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I think, you know, we're looking another week and a half, two weeks for on DeAndre if it comes back well. And Richie, Richie's in that fatigue state. You know, he's just come back. He had a, a big shift in. He felt some tightness the next day. So we've just, again, like, we've got to manage these players for long seasons. So he's been working individually this week. Um... You know, going into that field, the turf, etc. It's just, it's rough on the body. He, he may be on the bench. Uh, we may bring him into the game, but it's it's not a priority for this weekend for Richie Larea. Any other sort of injuries that? Uh, just trying to think. I mean, I o, I always uh, he's he's just returned back to training after the ankle. He picked up something right at the end of the game. But I'm expecting him to be back fully. No, I think we're we're in a good space. Yeah. What about Lorenzo? I mean, the last two training sessions, it seems like he's been sort of training well on turf. But you mentioned about having to sort of manage his minutes. Might he see action? I uh, might. He might see action. I mean, it's it, it's uh, you know go and assess the the facility when we get in there. It's a brand new turf there. It's been down three weeks. But I watched that game against Panama last night and you can see it's not settled if you've ever played on like that new crumb it feels like you're on sand it's it's a little bit wobbly so the medical staff will have a big say in, in you know what he does if he does anything so you know for us it's, uh, it's going to be a long a long season and we need him we need him in every game possible so my eyes are on a home opener that's the uh the carrot that's dangling there, and if he gets minutes, he might start the game, come out early. You know, the fans are just going to have to live with that. We, we really are going to manage him. And sorry, circling back to Maddie, um, you know, the club had. I would, I would suggest that the, the the team already had a lot of sort of midfield options. So why is it important to bring him in? What does he bring that maybe? Is there a profile? Of yeah, it's profile. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely profile. When he was at his best, he had that sort of Billy Gilmore type style of player um if you see him for brighton just how he he goes into areas that the players don't want to go into and he just bounces and moves bounces and moves so he has that ability to help control games from either the bottom of of your box in that center midfield or even at the top of the box where he played against lafc he's a real retainer progressor type player and for me you know i didn't think we had too much of that unless you brought Osorio into those centre midfield lower positions. So again, uh, just his energy, that low intensity running. Uh, he, he did the 1800 metres and I think he's broke all the club records. He's just an absolute machine in terms of his uh, running capacity and, and I think we'll need that through a long season. I think uh, the long staff signing brings your roster to 30. Um, 
do you anticipate, I mean, you could, I guess, still move some people. Uh, do you expect more changes, loans, people exiting to make room for others? Yeah, I think anything's possible. We're working with the front office just to see what, what is possible, what's available. Uh, you know, conversations with players will happen as they start to see, you know, how the cards are falling with regard, uh, are they core, are they sub-core or the extended squad players. And, and what I'm learning is, I'm still learning about the lads. You know, one lad who didn't show too well in pre-season in the last three weeks has really took an uplift. So, you know, people are settling into the squad, feeling more comfortable, but also understanding the, the tactical demands. So I think right up till the transfer window, we'll be, um, we'll be busy. We'll, we'll, we're looking for opportunity, but I think you all know uh, everything's, you know, reliant on, you know, what you move out of the club and what people want from this club to be able to get things in. And can I ask you about the young Brazilian you signed at TSE2, I Italo? Um, looks like he has a good pedigree. Yeah, great pedigree. And I think it's all credit, again, to the front office there. They're casting their net wide into South America. I think Jason's put a... A solid scout in that part of the world and we've had some good names come out of there one which was really close to signing so yeah I think he's gonna show something and uh, we'll definitely uh, explore him in the first team around the training environment just uh, to get a feel for him and you know TFC too I think that league having watched it watching my son play last year is it's a good it's a good breeding ground for for young talent um, and I think what you'll see as well in that in that TFC two is just some of the first team players. We're going to be really strategic with how we uh, optimise the physical preparation for, for example, when we come into the international window and we we'll lose players. You know, this next ten weeks is one game a week. I've been clear to players that you know they may not be helping the team as much in this ten weeks. Because when you're on a five-game prep and roll around, it's, it isn't, there's not much rotation in your starting 11. But come May, <laughs> when, when the May madness starts, you know, we're looking to, to periodize and make sure lads are coming in to that, that window where they've picked up the minutes with TFC2. So I think you'll see us operate with TFC2 a lot different to what they may have done last year. John Adam uh, Perlman, um, just wanted to get your sort of take on him. And what, what, if anything, did you see from him in the preseason that led to you felt you were confident that he was ready to, to make the jump? Well, I don't think he's ready to make the jump yet. I think he's shown that potential, um, first-team potential. I mean, that, that wasn't my decision. That's a decision that's made out of the front office and, you know, a, probably a pre-existing decision. So for me, you know, I had Adam for a three-week period uh, when I first took over, October, November. Uh, he had a spell in pre-season. I, I just think I've seen him grow probably another three centimetres in the last, you know, five weeks. It's amazing. Just you came back after Christmas and he's even bigger. So, you know, we've had that one-on-one -on -one with Adam. We're, we're clear on what gaps he's got to close, but also respecting he's a young man that, needs another solid season in TFC too. So, you know, he might sprout through in the next six months to, to get a, an opportunity again with the first team. But, you know, for me, I've been very clear. We need men in that back line as a starting point, and it's not a place to experiment with young players um, yet. Uh, New England, um, just wanted to get from a tactical perspective, what are you expecting from them? How do you think they play out uh, on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's it's chalk and cheese with, with Cincinnati because Cincinnati, we did like a whole year, a deep dive. We got like 30-odd games, XG analysis. So we're right into the weeds. But obviously, Caleb's new to the to the team. He has a very distinct style. But what I've seen he is a bit of an evolution as well in them first four matches. Um, so what I expect is it's uh, it's a team that will attack out of a, quite a narrow shape. They they certainly rely on their two central midfielders to drive the rhythm of their game, whether they drop into a back three and create that tactical flexibility to keep you guessing with your pressing. They're very good at creating a plus one with those midfielders. I was really impressed with uh, Paulson and 
um, the young lad that played yesterday, you know, I thought they, they they really caused some problems with that midfielder joining. So we have to be aware of that. But ultimately, it's it's how they attack centrally with heel and uh, ultimately his brother, the two heel brothers. I think that's that's the biggest threat when them two start combining like they did for the goal last night. You've you've got problems. So for us again, it's a it's a clear strategy of trying to force and lock outside and and deny those those central to across rhythms. I think that's. Uh, you know, a big part of, of what they want and what we have to take away. And again, it's a way game. It's a way game and a tough stadium. And as I've said to the lads, you know, points on the road to wins for us. Uh, I think since the last time we talked to you, they had the Canadian Championship draw you up against Simcoe. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Well, as long as uh, Kyle Lauren, <laughs> Daniel Henry and all those guys don't come back and get up for them, Julian de Guzman. Atiba as well, Janine Becky, yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm really proud of what they did. Um, you know, I remember speaking to Daniel about investing in the club, and you know, I think that's it was a big moment to see, you know, these veteran players giving back. Um, but cup games are tough. It's uh, you never know. You never know with cup games, and if you don't get the mentality right. You know, the cup upsets are always there. So, you know, we know we're the giant going into it. But uh, th there's a fairy tale story to be told, you know. Um, so we've we've just got to we've got to take it serious. I mean, that's that's the the mentality coming in. You know, we've got to take this game serious.